Greetings! I'm Chappers. I'm the captain. And we're at Anderton's.co.uk in the heart of Guildfordshire. We certainly are. About to pick some reverend. Yes, we're going to get all uh, all religious, aren't we? Dearly beloved. All reverend. The reverend. Yes. Um, check it out. Anyway, about uh, ooh, months and months ago, I decided to order reverend guitars. I went a bit crazy and I ordered about 100 reverend guitars for Anderton's. <laughs> um, so we didn't have enough space to put them all on display, but they're all on our website. But here's just a, a sample. What, what would you, what would you call a, a collective, smattering of A collective reverend. noun for reverence. A clergy. A, cl <laughs> <laughs> a clergy <laughs> of reverend guitars. It's a you know what they've done? They, they've absolutely got that Or is that it a flock? Of, they've got the modern retro thing down, They've bro. totally got it down. Dem so liquid dem ting. We love this. Uh, Rob and I saw these back at NAMM. Really, really liked them. Uh, they are a mid-price range of guitars, anything from like sort of 500 to 1,000 pounds. Um, but just doing it differently, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of retro, they've got some bold colours, um, got a clever guy called Joe Naylor that does all the sort of pickup designs and stuff. So Rob and I just thought we're going to grab three or four of these, mm. take them back to the hut. Yeah. Unfortunately, the one I really want to play is this lefty, but I think I might just have to have a go for the lefties out there. Well, you know, this, this, this Sambas one is the same, it's just a different colour. Yeah, but this is the colour, man. You need the colour. Well, Look at that colour. Well, it's nearly the same. Well, I, I want to try, I'm going to try the Billy Corgan, because did you know Billy Corgan? You're a fan of Smashing I Pumpkins, I had absolutely no idea. So he has his own signature model in lots of cool colours, so I guess... These are very interesting pickups. They certainly are. We'll talk about them a bit more. Okay. Do you want to, do you want to have that one? Okay. Um, what do I want to play? I take it you're not going to try and play the oh, right. ones. Do you want? To, do you just want the right-handed version of it though? The three yeah, okay. P90 version. So yeah. If you can have P90, I have three of them. That's what I said. Uh, so you have that one. I rather like this little bad boy oh. here because it's. I'm. I'm going to try and get into the whole one pickup. You know, like the Les Paul Jr. thing. So, yeah. you know, just got nothing to play with other than your controls and your fingers. So I'm going to try this one. Plus Any particular reason for that shift in your general oral dynamic? Because um, I think I'm just going to go less is more. You know, I'm going okay. to live the mantra. Is it anything to do with more. Richie Sambora? Doing well, that for sure. Richie Sambora, every time I used to see him playing with Bon Jovi, which I know now he's been usurped by the beautiful, <laughs> the beautiful Phil X. Um, but yeah, the, the best guitar sound Richie ever got every night when I saw him was with his uh, Les Paul Jr. I think he has a 59 or a 57 Les Paul Jr. Uh, and then the other one I'd like to play is, what's that one? A Descent H9. It looks like it's the sort of same sort of vibe as the Billy Corgan. It looks great though. What's this one here? Ooh. That's like a semi-hollow. I, I wouldn't mind just trying one of these <clears throat> what about this bad boy? Look, we'd like the Telecaster thing and, uh, the, yeah. and the Filtertron. Yeah. Oh yeah! Teltatron. I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm doing this. To the chap cave. To the back cave. To oh the, yeah. Uh, to the Reverend. To reverend to Lodge. Just, just the, to the, the monastery. To the swelteringly hot house. <laughs> That we just introed over the uh, the chords to Sweet Child of Mine. And wow! <laughs> Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. Kapow! <laughs> Say it again. Kapow! Yeah! Who are you? I'm the captain, the captain of the good ship Andertons in sunny Guildfordshire, <laughs> in uh, in the home counties of Surrey. Mm, heave ho, and to today, today we're man overboard because Pete's not with us. Man overboard! Uh, Danish Pete has taken his first holiday all year, and he's gone to Wales. Wales? All places. Yeah. yeah. So he's having a nice time down there, he's got some good weather. I sort of can't deport him. And we miss him. <laughs> yeah, that's true, it's what it is. That's what it is. He's found a Lego <laughs> shop, and he's very happy. And by the way, since Pete's away, we did a little cheeky fun uh, review of desks. Uh, Pete's desk, 
And uh, actually, Desk could be his new nickname, couldn't it? Danish Desk. Yeah, if desk you'd like beat. to see uh, Pete's Desk Rundown, go to... Desk Rundown. Go to my Facebook yes. page. Hi, I'm Rebecca Dirks. This is we're going to Desk Rundown. Oh, but Rebecca Dirks is brilliant. She is amazing. And we miss her. We do. Yeah, where is she anyway now? She, she just got a job doing something else. Went to do something else, yeah. But she's brilliant. Face and, and I'd like her to come back and do a lot more. Come and work for Andersons, Rebecca. Oh, move to, yeah. Move to England. I'll give you a job. It'll be awesome. Yes. Holy smoke, Batman! Um, <laughs> well, the Batman thing. Well, I don't know because it's because I, I thought Reverend Holy. You know we, what? Just, we decided. I know oh. you've seen that because they've seen the intro. Of course, we were in the show. Oh yeah, shooting the intro. Yeah. Which, well, I was going to say hours ago. Anyone could be Batman. It's uh, just to do with loads of money, isn't it? It is. It's like it Iron is. Man. Anyone yeah. could be Iron Man. I would say anyone could be Iron Man as long as they were clever. Batman, you still need to be physically a bit fit and mm. doing karate and stuff. Well, not everyone could come up with the concept of Reverend. No, now we're talking serious. Because uh, these have that retro vibe and look to them, and yet they're not retro. They're like new. So I and think could they have any more bolts on the on the bolt on? Yeah, it's an eight bolt. Well, this one isn't. It's a fixed net. So look, Reverend guitars. Um, what might be quite fun maybe is if our wonderful editor Rory just maybe sort of panned a few guitars across this video as we talked, because there there literally are hundreds of different shapes and concepts from, from Reverend. I'm doing the panning um, for him, he doesn't need to yeah, no, anymore. He will do, yeah. I have to go to the <laughs> Reverend website and find some images. Um, but they're kind of, the, the, it's funny isn't it really, because you sort of sit there going, how do you reinvent the guitar without reinventing the guitar? Add a wheel. Exactly, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's, I would say far more companies get it wrong than right when they're trying to go, let's build guitars that aren't, yeah. you know, just rip-offs of strats. And but that looks like something that you would have bought in the 70s or 60s and then you left it under your bed and it's come out perfect. Yeah, it's certainly got a kind of a Yamaha SG kind of vibe with a slightly offset vibe with the single coil kind of Les Paul Jr. thing. I mean, it's it's a sort of a, as you say, it's kind of, it, it's, it's like lots of ingredients put together yeah. into a cake it's that got might a not work. It's a scratch but, plate but that looks does. like a Pac Man ghost. And um, it does look a bit like it. If you drew yeah. the eyes here, yeah. and you literally go, mit, mit, Well, I think they've got a thing with scratch plates because this one looks like a raccoon's face. That's a cool scratch plate. It's like a raccoon's face, it. though. You see the ears? It does look like a raccoon's face. I keep telling face. you, man. See, they've got a thing of scratch plates. And that looks like um, that looks like, like a, my new guitar. That looks like a Grand Prix circuit. I, in fact, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there is a Grand Prix circuit. <laughs> is that Monica? That does, no, I don't have a Monica. It's, All it's right. a different. Are they got to avoid the uh, the tone knob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but post in the comment section below which Grand Prix circuit does this scratch plate most to owning look like? Scale electrics when I was a kid. That was my chair, by the way. So look, let's take, you know, we, we just grabbed some guitars. Do you know what, I've taken all the labels off them, so I'm not even sure which ones they are now. I'm fairly sure this one's called the Sensei. Sensei. I heard that guys at <coughs> Reverend were, were so inspired by the uh, original Karate Kid movie that they, they decided to name the guitar the Sensei. But you can tell they've waxed on here, <laughs> and then they've, def they've waxed off <laughs> I, so many times that the gloss finish is, uh, is unbelievable. Hang on a second. <laughs> With your Invisi chopsticks. With my Invisi chopsticks and the Invisi fly. Um, can you do the crane? I, I can do all of that, yeah. Can you really? Well, yeah. Can you actually do the crane? Then? Yeah. I'm not going to do I'm going to smack my face on this. <laughs> but yeah. I, Hands up, who wants to see Rob do the crane? I'm not going to do the crane. <laughs> it's a Facebook video for another day. Okay, well, I've got the Jetstream 390, so named, I'm guessing, because of the three beautiful custom-made P90 pickups. In fact, am I right in thinking that all the pickups in Reverend are kind of their own thing? They certainly are. Yeah, there's a chappy there called Joe Naylor, who's the kind of the whiz kid behind the guitars. And he's and nailed it. Yeah, so it was the, 
electronically, I'm pretty sure every single guitar features their own design pickups, and also you'll like this a bass roll off mm. control. So who needs bass? Well, I think <coughs> to a certain extent. Well, look, we'll demo that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest because guitars, if you want to cut it through the mixer, you got to get rid of the baser. That's the bassist's job. So you got five ways. I don't know why I went Italian I don't know when I said why you that, but like it that. just became a thing that um, I couldn't stop doing. Too much Don Mio sauce. Well, rosebud fingerboard, maple neck. It's got a body made of some kind Carina. of mahogany. A oh, Corina. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, maple veneer, and I don't know if that is. I think that is just what Corina looks like. How oh, is that? You're absolutely correct. Yeah, I think that is just. Correct. I mistook that for flame maple, but very very low flame, and no. then of course I realised that Corina has that kind of look. It's um, interestingly, mine is, looks like it's signed by hand. They're all they have the signature and the serial number put on when they do the setups. Interesting. So they're all they're all kind of That's individually cool. set up. Uh, it comes with a tremolo. This is a a, some, Wilkinson. a Wilkinson tremolo, mm -hmm. and I have to say it's really quite stable. <laughs> Why don't I run them through the individual pickup sounds thus, as we have done for the past 1,728 million videos, uh, videos yeah. of all time and space. So here is the first P90, well, one, two, three, four, five, it's a five wave. So this is the first P90. <laughs> And not very humming. I was thinking exactly. A little bit, but not nothing like as much as I'm used to with yeah, P90. It's, 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 they're, they're quieter than I thought they'd be. There is hum, but it's quieter <coughs> than I thought it would be. So now I've got the blend I'm imagining between the this one and this that one. That freaked me out for a minute. I looked at it and just thought, oh, Rabia hasn't mic'd up your guitar. Uh, but yeah. Of course, yeah, just no, in you, case you're thinking, how yeah. do we do that? We are running this Fender bass breaker through the enormous Marshall 4x12. We're, mar we're, fen we're marshalling a Fender. No, we're fendering a Marshall. Ooh. <laughs> this is my favourite tone of all the tones that this guitar yeah. provided. sound. Mm. It's such an organic, natural yeah, sound. Yeah, I agree. Middle. Mm. Creamy. Sounds and then great. Neck and middle combination, which sounds like a martial art move. <laughs> <laughs> Double drag snake move!
obviously that's quite a bassy sound, especially with the 4x12. So can we just demonstrate yep. the sort of the bass? <clears throat> Should we do that on the neck pickup so that it's more either, more obvious? So here's with all the bass in. Here's with the bass all rolled up. In. Out. Shake it all about. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's a kind of real sort of debate about, you know, would you would you play your rhythm stuff? with the bass rolled off and then roll the bass in to give you a bit of extra balls for solo or is it actually you play your clean stuff with the bass rolled in but your dirty stuff with the bass rolled out or, I'm you know, really what, interested what? to see what it's like lead with the treble pickup and the bass rolled on a little bit of just rhythm for you. And I'll roll the bass off. And we'll see if the bass in makes your sound mushy and less uh, intelligible, okay. if you like, or... And so the I'll, neck I'll, or the... Or what do you want me to play lead wherever on? Wherever you want. I mean, I'll just okay. play some... some um... <clears throat> so I'll start playing on the neck and then I'll roll off the bass. What key are you going to play in? Uh, what key would you like? All of them. A. Definitely makes a difference to the way I'm able to hear the guitar. What because, in a way? What, right, in a crowded room with two amps next yeah. to each other, when you roll off the bass, suddenly I come through more. Yeah, I think so that's kind of. It's the... subtle, but it's definitely there, and it's a really interesting. Mm. Of course, and it's a little bit like what a tube screamer does, wasn't it? When you kick a tube screamer, and it takes a little bit of the bass off of your sort of you know guitar what it's like? tone. What's it it's like, like? A reverse tone knob. It is a reverse tone knob. <laughs> so it's like yeah, it, it is a reverse. So, uh, well, I don't know if technologically it's a reverse tone knob, but you're completely. Um, no, I don't know actually, because you don't lose. Treble, do you? you just well, no, but just when you turn the tone knob, you get you get darker. When you turn yeah. this one, you get brighter. Right. Yeah. So it's like a reverse That's tone true. knob. Um, what else do we got to tell you about that guitar? Not well, a lot, not a lot because it's pretty much we're done. But it's a beautiful guitar. I just find this a bit strange. Why? Why eight? Well, because eight's better than six. Which it's is better, better than four. Okay, that you know <laughs> you can never have you can never have a neck. Join that's too sturdy, can no. you? No. Oh, locking tuners. We forgot to say locking tuners. I think all the range has locking tuners on it, which is very cool. Tuna range. Nice. Ave la tuna lock edge. Um, uh, wait a minute. Do these glow dans le dark? No, they no, they're are. They're just, just like little imitation little. clay. Imit so <laughs> no, they are because like, on the like old old um, Fender Strats, people used to have the clay inlays, and these are kind of like a really? they're just a plastic inlay, but they're kind of made to look wow. like imitation clay. Let me unsheath this one and get my my Billy Corgan. Well, let me take them through. Can I take them through Do this it. one first? You can while I'm Billy Corganing. Um, so I've got a Sensei Junior. Uh, this shape guitar is available. Sorry. That's all right. It's available with um, two pickups if you would prefer. I think you can get Bigsby's on them, all kinds of stuff. So I've just got this one amazing P90 pickup. So I've got to do everything here with my fingers, volume control, tone control, and the bass roll off. So this You've got is to do everything with your fingers. <laughs> everything in. So I can go pretty clean. So that, this is everything now about halfway on here. If 
If I start to roll the volume and tone up and I hit hard with my plectrum, but you can see almost immediately it's a bit woolly on the bass end. And I think that's where this kind of roll off control comes from. I actually prefer the sound of it with the half rolled. Yeah, I think all the way in. I mean, it'll depend on the amp and the pedals you're using. I mean, it's a really nice on your own sound, isn't it? It's yeah. like gratifying lots of bass, but I think in a gigging, you know, with Well, I think with the secretly band, is never to put it all the way in and always to put a bit of it in. So that's none. That's everything. Now if I add some gain from a pedal. Bass and no, and all the treble rolled off, and all the bass rolled Dark, off as well. Or all the tone rolled off, and all the bass rolled in. It's a guitar with a lot of possibilities. Um, I keep pressing the wrong button on here. That's the one I wanted to do. It's a guitar with a lot of possibilities in a very comfortable to play. Again, Carina body, uh, Tone Pros, you know, bridge and tail piece. Is that still a Rosewood fingerboard? Yep, yeah, Rosewood fingerboard. Um, locking machine heads again. Really light, aren't they? Carina guitars always are really lightweight. Yes. Um, Corina. So, anyway, so you're over to the Corgan. I got the Billy Corgan. Now the Billy mm. is available in some wicked colours, so check those out. This one is the. Well, this has to be one of the, the wickedest colours. Silver but. sunburst thing, but they so. do like a wicked purple burst and all kinds of other. Oh really? Colors. Yeah, purple really burst. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, very cool. I'm a big Billy Corgan fan, you so are. I'm excited to find out that this is the Billy Corgan model. Uh, it's got rail hammer hum cutters. Rail hammer hum cutters. If he hasn't written a song called Rail Hammer Hum Cutter, I don't he know should. what he's he thinking about. He should. Um, yeah, it's a bummer being a hummer. That's a <laughs> Smashing Pumpkins joke thing. One of Jake is just a song. Lyric. I love the sound of these. They're really, really cool. And what's awesome is yeah. that my favourite album from mm -hmm. Billy Corgan and Smashing Pumpkins is Simon's Dream. And actually, uh, it absolutely nails some of the tones. Uh, through the bass breaker, which really surprised me. Well, I don't know why it was a surprise, you'd think. I mean, he knows what you're I suppose, doing. in fairness, it is his signature guitar, isn't it? Yes, it's a Carina body, but it's semi hollow, so I'm guessing under some of these plates are some cunningly hold out holes. Can I feel the weight of it? Feel the weight, it's really light. Yeah, it's pretty light again, isn't but it? But you've got to hold it down. Yeah. Um, again, it's an eight bolt on, maple, uh, maple fretboard on a maple neck, and um, I love the colour. I love these knobs, they're so easy to grip. It's a five-way Bladé, one, two, three, it's a three-way Bladé, not a five-way even slightly. Uh, interesting roller string tree. Yeah, we've all got those, I think, or at least the Stratty style, you know, the Fendery style ones. Oh yes, I'm just comparing it to the two that yes. we've already played. Um, and a different bridge on that one as well. Yeah, this is just a hardtail. But it's strung um, through the body. Yes, it is strung through the body. Unlike, you know, the, the sort of the, the Gibson-y style. With the real strings as well from Dario. Real strings. None of your fake stuff. I don't even know what that's a conspiracy theory about. But yeah, Dario and Annie Ball just make strings for everybody. Oh, I couldn't possibly I say, that. say that. Sorry. Couldn't possibly ever mention that. Um, and what I like about this is that it really does vintage tones incredibly well, or 
it does incredibly good modern tones. Let me hear it. Um, so let me give you some modern tones from, what's the model called? Uh, the Billy Corgan. The Billy Corgan. <laughs> Can I just say, Mr. Chapman, you've dialed in one of the best sounds we've ever had. Out of <laughs> uh, although I should say it's probably it's running through we're a marshal the four twelve. You know what? I think I think you're mm. right. Thank you. I think you're right, and I think it's because more air moving mm. is more better. But you can buy that as a head. So I think my what that's for me. Rather yeah. than buying the, I mean, I know the combo is super practical. It's really heavy, uh, though. But I, I found out today how heavy it was. I would buy the head and because uh, it sounds a monster. I feel like I've got some gains just lifting it. Yeah. Uh, but it's the cut that I, I so enjoy. <laughs> It does, it's so easy to play, but it's got some kind of sonic cut that I love. But I'm not hugely familiar with sort of Smashing Pumpkins. What, what All right, well, so let me play of... you. Um... Sounds like the stuff I listen so, to. So, so essentially, they're a Nickelback covers band. Then no, I'm joking. <laughs> I know how much hate I will get. Maybe Nickelback were a Smashing Pumpkins covers. Band. You know, despite all all my rage, I'm still like a rat in a cage. Uh, that, no, it just it, lyric? no, it sounds just really. Lyric. It just sounds like Billy Corgan, and I love that because so often I pick up signature guitars from artists to go, well, yeah, it feels right, but it doesn't sound anything like the artist. But I, I just have a feeling he spent a lot of time. Well, he's put his name on the pickups. Yeah. He's definitely spent a lot of time doing this. Yeah. And I, I love Billy Corgan. I love his music, and I love his sound, and his experimentation with fuzzes and things. And I think this guitar is great representation of a great artist. Great review. Thank you. Um, so I now have uh, a guitar called the Buckshot. The what? Um, Buckshot. Oh, Buck. Okay. Yes. So it's a bit like a bus stop, but you, but if you've got big, um, if you've got a speech impediment, <laughs> I'll meet you at the Buck Stop. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting at the Buck Stop all day. <laughs> you wait for three hours, none turn up, and then three turn up together. <laughs> Well, I'm presuming that everything that Lee just said would have been bleeped out with some kind of animal noise, but absolutely it wasn't in ridicule of anyone with any kind of disability or any kind of racial type. It back wasn't in, of any of those things. Anyway. No. Right. Back in the room. Leave it all in. You know what? Leave it all in. Yeah. You know, what? first it was half in. What they've done again is a great body shape that you don't go, oh no, it doesn't fit with my mental concept of what a guitar shape should be. For sure. But it's unique. So we have got. Um, a two pickup. <laughs> <laughs> we've got this sort of, we've got this kind of cool amalgamation of several of my favourite guitars. So we've got, we've got like a, a, a Telecaster sort of inspired, basic sort of shape with a Tele style bridge pickup. We've got a, that's a, a fat. We've got a Revtron. That's a fat yeah, it's single. A, it's a big old loud tonic single. We've got this um, <clears throat> Filtertron style inspired pickup at the neck here that uh, Reverend have called the Revtron. We've got a Les Paul kind of bridge arrangement, or an S, you know, a Gibson -y kind of bridge arrangement, and we've got a bolt on neck. So if it you press really the Revtron, is. does it transform into Revtron? Revtron, truck, a lot to um, Cyclops. It really is the sort of the, the, the sort of the bastard child of like you know every John Snow. could be. Yeah, he gets killed by the way if you haven't seen that bit. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
I just I, I've never seen an episode. But Gandalf of dies in Harry Potter. He well, certainly that's really does, sad. doesn't he? Very sad. <laughs> because he. We've had this joke already. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. All the reverend guitars, the, all the pickups are pokey. So if you want real clean Pokemon. sounds, yeah, you, uh, you, you need either a spanky clean guitar amp or, or you've got to turn the volumes down. So let's start with the Revtron pickup at the neck. So it's kind of got a zing, but it's mainly MIDI and bassy, I guess. Uh, the bridge pickup is this. And both together, like, well, like that. We've got the, the bass roll off, but now is up here, kind of almost where you'd expect to see a Gretsch kind of volume control or something. Such a simple idea, but with so many usable kind of connotations, isn't it? I really like it. Uh, gain. If you take the bass out, it becomes more telecaster like. I like it. I like this guitar a lot. And you know, again, Karina body, loads of different colours, 53 bolt on neck this time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no. But you know what? I, I demonstrated this with less than half the game. Really? Folly. So let me just dial in a little bit more. Just, just a little bit more, and then um, <clears throat> since it's kind of a rock, you know, rock guitar, let me give you a little bit more of the um, the gain tones for the different pickups. So here's the it. bridge pick. <laughs> Is the middle position. And El Necro. <laughs> that was that was such a nice song. We should just jam out. I think we should just give Reverend our seal of approval. Uh, the whole range, as I said, is is pretty affordable. I think the bulk of the guitars that we've got are between sort of 500 and a thousand pounds. There's a few more weirdy, wonderful artist signature models that sit just <coughs> above that. I'd um, love Billy to release these pickups to sell separate. Well, they may well even do that. I'm not Ooh, sure. I'm really not sure. I'll, what do you I'll, want to I'll play them, bro? Out. Whatever. Let's what, just what? Let's, let's rock it up. Mm -hmm. 